All right, we have three callers now, Wilma, Michael, and Ann. We will get to each of you. And Wilma, I'm going to start with you. I think you're probably calling to, um, to re-ask that question or something. Maybe we didn't answer it. But Wilma, okay, we'll start with you. What, what did you want to ask again? Okay, yeah, it's correct. It, it was a sole beneficiary, was the beneficiary and the trustee, both, okay? And they passed away. But my question was, and I understand that she says you can amend that beneficiary as much as you want to, and I'm assuming the trustee. But say I went from one law firm to another law firm as my trustee, with no beneficiary, maybe I'll set up some sort of special trust. If I go from one law firm to another as administrator, is there a rule of law that says that that law firm has to start all over again so it doesn't look like something shady's going on? Do you understand what I'm trying to say there? Just shake your head right now, Miss McGinnis, yes or no, because I can't hear you and I'll hang up. But yes or no, does, it, does if you go from one law firm a, to another as your trustee, do you have to start over from scratch be, so there wouldn't be some sort of, you know, shaky, shady business or something? Say I met some lawyer in a McDonald's and he said, I will take care of you. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I, I better get off. <laughs> okay, well, let's see. All right. Law firm to serve as trustee, do they have to start over from scratch, like start the trust from the very beginning? I, you know, not knowing all of the details there, I would say no. Uh, I mean, a lot of times if someone comes to us with an existing trust, perhaps their life circumstances have changed, their goals have changed, we amend the trust, we might restate the trust. Um, it's rare that they're going to serve as, uh, that an, an attorney is going to serve as your trustee. That happens very infrequently in my world. Um, so you think the answer is no, you wouldn't really have to do that? So I'm going to move on to Michael, if you think that. Okay, Michael. Hello, Michael. Yes. Go right ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, if I set up a trust, uh, I am the trustor, she said. But uh, mm -hmm. can't I also be the trustee of that trust and name a remainder trustee <clears throat> uh, when I pass? And the second uh, question I have is, with regard to the cost of a trust, uh, you know, I have a will. It, it wasn't very costly to establish that will, but can uh, she give the listeners just uh, a, an idea of what the cost is for a, let's call it simple trust, as opposed to a will? Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. 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 So uh, in, with a revocable trust, you can be your own you are the trustor he's got that right you can serve as your own trustee you usually do and then you can name we call it an alternate or a successor trustee he was referring it as a remainder trustee i mean i think we're talking about the same sort of thing that could serve in when you became incapacitated or passed away so all of that is is exactly the way a revocable trust would work for you the cost of um, a simple revocable trust is fairly comparable to a will. Your real cost savings, even if your trust costs more, is going to be a will is designed to be probated, so you can anticipate future probate costs uh, that will be charged back to your estate, whereas a trust is usually designed to avoid probate. So even if the trust costs more to establish, in the long run, it's going to be uh, a cost-saving strategy for your estate. And, and I guess it's hard to say it's going to cost $300 or $100. It's not going to cost $300. It's going to cost uh, probably a few thousand dollars. Okay, that's the general yeah. idea. Okay, all right, let's go to Ann. Hello, Ann? Yes. Go right ahead. Yes. What's on your I have mind? A question. Yes, please, go okay. ahead. Okay, uh, could Barbara talk a little bit about uh, 401k and protecting the 401k dollar amount and turning it into a Medicaid compliant annuity. Okay. 
Yeah. Can you so, talk about that? I can. Wow. And so, thank you for that question. And yeah. Michael and Wilma, all of you, thank you for your question. All right, go right ahead. So, <clears throat> Ann um, has a, sounds like she has 401k. 401k is another form of qualified money, similar to an IRA. Can't put it in a trust. You really can't give it away to someone else. You can't, uh, well, you can transfer it to your spouse if, if you know, if maybe the sick institutionalized spouse needs um, to be in the nursing home. We can use a court order to transfer it to the well spouse in the community, but it's still a countable asset. So what she's referencing, the Medicaid compliant annuity is a strategy that uh, we frequently use to protect qualified money for the community spouse, for the well spouse, that converts a countable resource into a non-countable income stream. It is not the kind of annuity that your financial advisor is going to be talking to you about in terms of creating, um, you know, deferred where it's making money and interest. You get all of your original principal back in a Medicaid compliant annuity, a very low rate of uh, interest because the insurance company that is holding the annuity, administering the annuity, immediately starts paying it back to you in form of an income stream. So they don't really have time to invest it and make money on it to share those earnings with you. So you're not gonna make a lot of money, but you're not gonna lose money. And where your return on investment really is, is in uh, saving dollars that you're not putting out to the nursing home each month because you qualify for, for Medicaid. So works at a spousal situation, community spouse would be the one annuitizing their 401k or IRA, institutional spouse qualifying for Medicaid. Um, it, is, it is frequently used to accelerate um, it's a frequently used strategy to accelerate Medicaid eligibility and uh, by creating an income stream for that community spouse. You know, TenCare allows the community spouse to have a max, uh, um, an organic income of about $2,200, $2,300 a month. Well, few people can actually run their household on $2,200 or $2,300 a month gross. And so having this extra income stream from their annuity uh, helps them be able to take care of their home, take care of themselves. Um, and then uh, it's just a way of restructuring assets, completely compliant with 10 care rules. But I would be, I would really only do that under the advisement of uh, an attorney and we involve our clients financial advisors in discussing uh, the plan so that they understand why we're making the recommendations what's the what's the benefit and burden ratio there yeah what you're saying i mean you said earlier you're not a financial planner per se you're not trying right. to but a lot of what you're talking about here sounds like financial planning you're you're in that world a little bit we touch it for sure and so when you're, you're talking about spending thousands of dollars a month on on chronic care um you, you need to be versed in in how you can how you leverage all of the resources that are available to families private dollars and public benefits dollars uh, to whatever extent they're going to be eligible. Um, all right, we have one minute left. What do you want people to take away? What's the bottom line? Um, I'm always preaching about pre-planning, planning ahead. Um, I also believe in empowering yourself with knowledge and knowing things like mm, Medicare is a very small payer for long-term care. So don't count on your Medicare benefit, which is a great benefit but it's not going to pay for long-term care. That is very important. And, and all, of, all of the stuff you talked about is, is just, it's, it's an example of the benefit by talking to a professional. It costs money on the front end, but it saves, you're talking about thousands of dollars. If, they, if, if you can oh, somehow yeah. save your house 
from being taken by yeah. 10 care or whatever. And, and that's probably not the right terminology. But if you can somehow do that, then think about that. That's huge. So Barbara McGinnis, thank you yeah. so much for coming on. Thank you. Uh, we will take a break and I'll come back and give all of uh, Barbara's information about how to get in touch with Takis McGinnis there. We'll take a break. Be back right after this.